following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Today we are going to talk about the minor initiations. Remember that the last week we talked about uh, the ordeals that the initiate always pass when he's entering into the initiation. But also the Venerable Master Samael on Beor talked to us about the nine minor initiations that previously we should have or, or uh, acquire before uh, the entrance into the major initiations of fire. He says that the nine minor initiations are related with the testing path or the path in which the neophyte is tested in the nine degrees for, for the neophyte to be worthy to enter into the major mysteries. So as you uh, see, there are nine minor decisions. Of course, if we apply Kabbalah in this matter, we will see that these initiations are related with the tree of life. The tree of life, which is of course the real being. Certainly the initiations are always different steps that the consciousness is acquiring in each one of the main parts of being according to the tree of life. If we uh, recall that we are in the physical plane, then we do not take in account the physical body. In other words, the world of Malkut, which is precisely the bottom of the tree of life. Remember that the 10th century of are the ten main parts of the being, because in reality the being has many parts. The Master Samael tell us in the Pisti Sophia that the being has 49 parts, related of course with the 49 levels of being, or levels of the mind, or of the consciousness. But the synthesis of this is the tree of life in which we see the ten sephira or ten spheres related to the different parts that we have to develop and that we have to study. First, as you know, from the bottom of the tree of life we have Malkut, which is the physical body. And then above it we have Yesod, which is the vital body. Immediately we have Hod, which is the astral body. Then after, Netzah, which is the mental body, following by Tifereb, 
which is the human soul. If read, the human soul is the first sephira from the bottom to the top in the second triangle. And then toward the left we have Gehepura, which is the spiritual soul. And then to the right, Gedula, which is Atma, the spirit. And then reaching the first triangle, to the left we have Bina, which is the Holy Spirit. And then to the right, Hohma, which is the Christ, the Son. And ending with Keter, which is the crown, the father of all the lights. So these are the ten sephiroth. So, by analyzing the nine initiations of minor mysteries, we arrive at the conclusion that are the nine steps that every neophyte has to achieve in order to understand and comprehend the steps that he has to take in order to achieve the self-realization of the being. Is it one initiation per sephira? It is always one initiation for sephira. For each sephira. That's why in major mysteries we say that we have five initiations of major mysteries. But in reality, there are seven because they are related with a real man that has seven bodies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bodies. But we never uh, take into account the sixth and the seventh major initiations because the sixth and the seventh are related to the monad. And the monad is always standing, never falls. So that's why the Master Samael always talks about five which is always the five initiation that we have to acquire in order to reach the level of human being. Anyhow, before entering into those initiations, we have to study. When we say study, we have to be, of course, as we say, probationary path, in which the initiate, the new fight is tested, but not I mean, it's tested in the way that he or she has to learn, not intellectually speaking, because every initiation is related to the soul. This is something that we have to comprehend and understand. Not a single initiation is received by the ego or by the physical personality. Always the initiations are received by the soul, by the consciousness. That's why the Master Samael says, whosoever says, I have such and such initiations, is a liar. Because the physical personality or the ego here in this physical plane never receives any initiation. The one that receives it is the soul or the intimate, who is always out of the body because we have the ego instead of it. We are tested in the physical plane because the essence, the consciousness, the soul, the Burata, which is incarnated and is gracefully bottled up within the ego, is inside the physical body. When the initiate, I say, when the initiate, which is always the intimate, which is always the monad, that always has two souls, divine and human soul. That is the initiate. So when this initiate is of course achieving, entering into the initiation, his lower part, which is bottled up into the ego, has to overcome different weaknesses, different uh, sins in order to acquire to overcome all of that. And that's why the main thing for the initiation is chastity. No one can acquire any initiation without chastity. 
Of course, we are talking about white initiations. Because the black initiations, which are always received by many neophytes in the black lodge, are initiations related with the ego, never with the soul or with the intimate. We are dealing, of course, with white initiations because we want to achieve the self-realization of the being. So these white initiations are always related, whether they are minor or major, always to the being, the soul, never to the ego, never to the personality. This is something that we have to understand in order to not to point the name of anyone and say, such and such person, in naming the name and the last name, or surname, and saying, has such and such initiation, because it's a big lie. What we have to say is, I think that the intimate of this person, whose name is in the physical plane, such as a name, has some initiations, or this initiation. That's the right way of talking. Because here in this physical plane, we are just sinners, people with a lot of ego. And that ego is the one that has to be disintegrated. That personality has to die in order for the being to resurrect in the soul. But that soul has to die. Of course, then, we have the concept that before entering into the major initiations in order to work with the fire in each of the spheres of the tree of life or parts of the being, the neophyte has to learn, has to understand the path, has to comprehend what to do in each of the spheres. So the consciousness receives knowledge, instruction, wisdom in the internal planes, in the temples of the White Lodge. And when the soul is learning all the different steps in order to acquire such and such initiation, it's always, of course, tested in the physical plane and in the internal planes. Remember that the soul, the essence, the burata, that which is bottled up within the ego, has to learn how to be in chastity. So that neophyte, that burata, has to overcome the ego that is united to it. And that's why in the physical plane, there are many uh, books, sacred books, that guide the neophyte in order to learn what to do, in order to gain the capacity of entering into the doors of heaven. All the sacred books of the holy religions, but mainly in these times, the books of the Master Samael on the Or. Why mainly those books? Because are uh, the books that are unveiling all of the sacred books, like the Bhagavad Gita, the Bible, and all the books that were written by the masters, the avatars in ancient times, for the uh, initiates that, that were wanting to enter into the initiation. In the ancient times, in order for us to receive the great truth of the uh, Saha Maituna, any neophyte was always in chastity. Of course, they were in celibacy. So these minor initiations are with, for celibate people who transmute with pranayamas sexual energy that know how to sublimate the sexual energy because only by abstaining ourselves from sex not enough. We have to know how to sublimate the sexual force. There are many people in these uh, times that 
they are sexual abstinence, but they don't work with the energy. They are just avoiding the sexual act. The result, the master says, is the nocturnal pollutions. That's why, related to the nine sessions of minor mysteries, we have to understand and to comprehend each one of the nine parts of the being which are above the physical body. To quote in this very moment Moses is very important. Moses left the Ten Commandments. As we know, Ten Commandments related to the Ten Sephirah. He who understands, or whosoever understands the Ten Commandments consciously, that one, of course, is having in his consciousness the tool in order to work with the major initiations. We have to state as well that the, the nine minor initiations are related with the accomplishment, at least in a certain percentage of the Ten Commandments. In the beginning, as you know, as I was explaining in other lectures, the initiate is always trying to overcome the difficulties in this physical plane to apply all of the forces, all of the strength that we have in order to enter into the internal planes and to understand the path of the self-realization of the being is to understand the Ten Commandments that says you shall not covet the goods of your neighbor. In order not to covet the goods of any neighbor, we have then to build, we don't have to feel envious or envy I mean, of anyone that relate with envy. We have to be discriminatory. Discrimination is a virtue that we have to develop. Discrimination is a virtue when we apply it to the ego, to our own particular individual ego. We don't have to be tolerant to any single aggregate. We have to discriminate all of them. They are not good. They are unfaithful. They are damned. They deserve, deserve death. So that discrimination has to be always working here in order not to be envious. Then we, should, we do not covet. When we do not covet anything, when we discriminate our own ego and we understand that we have to enter into the spiritual world, world then we are awakening. We feel the urgency of entering into the internal planes, or, or was in the gospel is stated to enter into the kingdom of heaven, because no one can serve two lords. You cannot serve God and Mammon. Meaning that if you are going to work for the civilization of being, you have to work for that, and to apply all your strength, all of your mind, all of your force to that. In this physical plane, as you know, there are many souls that are looking for that path that we already know. It is written in the Gospels that certain man or human being, when he found the secret path, and then, or in other words, he found a pearl, which is a symbol of the secret path. That pearl was, of course, very expensive. But he was in love with that pearl. And in order to acquire that pearl, he came into his house, and he sold his house, he sold all of his goods, he sold everything that he owned. And collected the money, and he went and bought 
the pearl. And then the Master uh, Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is similar to this to this person that performed that. Of course, the pearl is the soul, is the essence that we have to develop. And in this physical plane, you have to do anything in order to acquire that. Meaning that we have to be free. We have to release all of that, all of those attachments that we were talking, that we learn how to release them with the four ordeals of the elements. Little by little. But in the beginning, of course, is the ordeal of earth. And we have to study that the path is the path and we have to walk in it or to walk in it. And we have to do, of course, an inventory of that which is opposing for us to walk on the path and finally deciding to enter in. So we decide to enter, I repeat, and then we are learning from that moment we are learning, no, it's, no, it's not that we are accomplishing the Ten Commandments, we are learning how to accomplish with that Ten Commandments. You shall not covet your, ne your ne neighbor's good, because then you have to build your own good with your own, your own efforts, without coveting, I repeat, anything. In this physical plane, neither in internal planes. Because first you have to learn not to covet material things, then not to covet spiritual things. Just to work because the sake of the work, because we love it. And then of course, the neophyte is entering, as we know, into the path. And then, he's passing the ordeal of the garden of the threshold, and into the minor initiations, which are nine. The first one is related, Kabbalistically speaking, with the father, Peter. Remember that we have the erroneous belief that there is only one God in heaven and we are here in the earth, we are wrong. To understand God within each one of us, within ourselves and in the neighbors, is indispensable. The first commandment of Moses states, You shall love your, thy God with all your strength, with all your mind, with all your soul. Of course, the three brains the mind, the heart, and the sex. With all your strength, what is strength? Sexual strength, of course. With all your mind, what mind? Your intellectual brain. And with all your heart, the soul. Because the soul expresses to the heart, love. This implies that we have to know how to meditate, how to annihilate, Within each one of us, we have a lot of ego. That is, of course, the opposite of that first commandment. If we are fornicating, how we are going to then receive the first initiation? That's why the Master Samael says, any single person can achieve the first initiation of minor mysteries. A merry one will acquire that initiation very fast if the merry one is transmuting because the foundation of any initiation is transmutation of the sexual energy. This is how the ancient initiates knew it. They were entering into the temples. In the beginning there were neophytes in celibacy. And they were learning, working, maintaining. 
I repeat, is a job, a labor for the soul. I do not say that they will acquire the 100% of the accomplishment of the first commandment. Remember that we don't have to make any image of God because God is only one. Of course, God, the monad within each one of us, has no form. And when we analyze, do not form any image or to make any image of God, people always, people without instruction, without initiation, think that they are referring to the statues of the different religions. The, the invisible God is a God which is there in the clouds, and we are here on the earth. Images are related with the mind. We don't have to have any image to worship. Difficult for a neophyte to follow the commandments or, or the commands of the being. Usually, you're always following the commands of the ego. Anything that we think we do. We are seeking, for instance, suddenly we have in the mind, oh, I would like to eat some sandwich. Then we go and eat the sandwich. And we. If we analyze that simple, but we are at the conclusion that the being is not hungry for a sandwich. So who is the one that is hungry for it? That is putting into our mind that it's an ego, of course. Because the hunger comes into the body, and if we are conscious, we are going to give to that body which is that which is necessary. But usually you always do what the ego like Coca-Cola, hamburger, many other things that we are accustomed to eat because of the taste of it or because we like it. But who is that that is it liking it? It's not the being, it's the ego. The ego that we have, gluttony, etc. Talking about gluttony, but also we have other images inside that tell us many things and we do that. Our physical personality. So to point or to believe, in other words, that any single person or anyone is performing that commandment because he's not worshipping in any church or temple, any image or statue, to believe that that person is accomplishing the first commandment because he's not doing that, is just, of course, a lie. To find a person that accomplishes the first commandment is to learn about the mind, about the heart, about the sex perform, in other words, the will of God, to have any image. Christianity synthesizes that commandment when saying, you shall love your own God over everything. That is, of course, as we say in other lectures, conscious love. Because that love that Moses talks about is not the egotistical love that we feel in the sex or in the heart. In that love that we have to develop, which is conscious love, related with the consciousness, related with the soul. And that commandment is accomplished when the soul is an activity. But in this very moment, for instance, is coming into my mind a question that a friend of mine asked to the Master Samael on the in 1976 in a lecture. Master was talking about the different type of egos. And then the Gnostic said, Master, can you tell us something about the Gnostic ego? And then the Master says, well, that question is uh, uttered in Chinese, you know, because it's very difficult. It's obvious he says, that everyone develops the Gnostic ego, because in order to not to develop that ego, we have to be conscious always of the knowledge. But usually we take this knowledge and we are slipped. 
we are not conscious. Very seldom we remember our being, or we remember ourselves. We remember God, in other words. Only he or she who remembers his own God for second to second, from instant to instant, from moment to moment, is that one who is accomplished with that commandment. Loving God over everything with conscious love because he is the consciousness which is conscious loving his own being because he is remembering him every instant but usually you are always out of the being out of the consciousness only acting with the ego and then we are feeling as usually people are feeling that egotistical emotional love in the heart if you are with your spouse, kissing your spouse, loving your spouse, always do it remembering your being in order to do it with conscious love. Otherwise, we are just doing it with the ego. And we are, of course, developing and strengthening, increasing an ego of attachment. That is that ego that usually feels pain when that beloved is flying away from us or doing something against us. Everybody is in different levels because the different characters of people are related with the ego. Usually people always are identified with, oh, this sign belongs to this sign, and if you are this sign, and your ascension is in this, and the moon is in that, and that, that we are then uh, compatible. But they forget that we are ego. What we have to do is to try to overcome those characters and to be alike, but in the consciousness, in the soul, in the spirit. And for that we have to work. Then, of course, the second commandment related with the second initiation of minor mysteries, the understanding of the Word of God in different levels. Because every initiate is always developing that type of knowledge in different levels. God has an aim in each one of us. The consciousness is always knowing that name. Very seldom the mind in this physical plane knows that name. The master knew his name before reaching any initiation. And many other persons, uh, let me remind you, Parahamsa Yogananda, his way to initiate is an awakened being, an awakened soul. He has no solar bodies. He only achieved the nine initiations but in the very higher level, because he will walk completely consciously by annihilating the ego, only being single, but being single. But many initiates that achieve that initiation reject the entrance into the major mysteries, because sometimes they need instruction, they need information. Of course, any neophyte that works hard in the consciousness following the commandments, I repeat, will awake his consciousness. The name of God, of course, is not only related with our own particular individual sacred name, but also with the sacred mantras. Mantras that are related with many languages that we apply in order to help ourselves or to help other people. That's why it is written, you shall not pronounce or you shall not utter the name of God in vain. Christ, Hohmah, the second Sephira, as you know, is that energy that dwells within everything. Anyone that applies this type of knowledge in a selfish way, someone that needs to understand the name of God, 
I said that in the beginning of the Nazi movement in 1950, the Master Samael was telling, physically speaking, the name of their own being to the people. And they were knowing the name. But later on, he realizes that he was doing something wrong. Because each one of us has to gain that. In my case, for instance, I knew the name of my being with efforts. Many times when I was in Mexico, I was asking the master about the name of my being, and he never told me. He always told me, you will know that name when you will receive your initiation. And I give thanks that he didn't tell me that. Because now I really appreciate that. Something valuable. But I repeat, are also related with other forces, mantras, powers, because the world is always creative. Remember that in the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. Everything was made by the word. To pronounce words, sacred mantras of praying has to be always with conscious. Consciousness. Not unconsciously. Not to play with sacred things. Not to make business with holy things. The sacred word of God is written in the Bible. It is written in all the sacred books People make business with it. They are always selling the Lord. We sell the Lord in many ways. Therefore, the accomplishment of the second commandment implies always meditation. Anything that we are going to perform or to do that relates to any type of sacred uh, activity should be always analyzed. If we are pronouncing mantras or vocalizing mantras, we have to be we, or we have to perform it consciously, not mechanically. Because then we are of course doing something wrong. To our consciousness. The word. Many times, for instance, in lectures, I pronounce the sacred name of the Lord in Kabbalah, Yod He Bab He, which is holy and unpronounceable. But always I pronounce it when we are teaching. Because the strength of God comes. Those sacred words are related with God. So the strength comes. There is another sacred mantra, ancient one, which is Tuu, that should not be pronounced in vain. But we pronounce it because we are, of course, teaching to the consciousness something that they need. We do not pronounce the name of God for the sacred words when we are not related with the doctrine. Even though, when we are talking, we have to be careful with our words. Because remember that when we are in chastity, our throat is very strong and has power. People in chastity should not condemn or criticize or send any damnation against anyone because the war is strong and has power because the one that transmutes the sexual energy is feeding the throat with strength and that is energy so if you use your war in the wrong way of course that person is punished. I can learn that. Price the word. Something holy. I hear many people in the ancient times, for instance, 
or in the past times, that they were claiming to know about the second word of God and they never pronounced the word of God because they believe that the word of God, Kabbalistically speaking, is holy. Meanwhile, I saw those people, same people, then mean other people that according to them were inferior or were not of their religion. What is the third commandment? You shall make the Sabbath holy, the seventh day. Because Sabbath, Shabbatai, Saturn, is related with the Holy Spirit, Bina, the third Sephira. <coughs> Christianity, we say, we shall keep any festivity, holy festivity, always holy. Festivities are the festivities that we receive in internal planes when we are transforming ourselves, when we are annihilating the ego. To keep the Sabbath holy, the seventh day, which is death, because Sabbath, Shabbatai, Saturn, is the Lord of death. It's related with the holiness, sanctity that we have to acquire by annihilating the ego. To keep that Sabbath holy means not to do what the wife of Lot did when they were leaving Sodom and Gomorrah because the Lord was going to destroy it. But the wife of Lot turned and was transformed into salt, the statue of salt. Meaning, somebody is walking ahead and suddenly going back turning into his son all the way. In the Gospels, Peter says, those persons or those people that do that are similar to the dog that vomited and then go back into the vomit and swallow the vomit again. Of course, when you are sick, when you are vomiting, you are taking out bad things which are inside of you. But then there are people that after receiving the knowledge and knowing about everything, they return to the past and they again eat that vomit. Meaning, they return. They don't keep the Sabbath holy. Or as in other XX religion, they do. They sing all the week because Saturday or Sunday they are going to confess their sins before the priest and they are always forgiven. Then the next week they again do the same thing because anyhow, the weekend they are going to be forgiven. That is of course not accomplishing with the Holy Sabbath. If we are now an ego, we should be always conscious of that and not to return. To keep that holy in order to go ahead on the path of the self-realization of the being. But to be in a vicious circle, meditating in one ego, annihilating that ego, and then returning and doing it again and again like that. Of course, we are not going to go to any part, to any place in that way. We will be always in standby. That's why that is one of the causes, because many Gnostics are not having any experience or in the, do not advance. This is in mythology as well related with the blowers that they are of course carrying a stone in their back and climbing the hill. When they reach the summit of the hill the stone always go back or roll back into the valley and then they go down again and take the stone and put it in their bags and go back to the summit again. Same thing is related to the Gnostics that are trying to sublimate, to transmute. They transmute the energy and suddenly, months later, a year later, they spill. When I'm saying this, I'm talking about the action of willingly, willingly fornicating. 
Because accident happens when you are working with chastity. You have lust, sometimes you spill without wanting to do it. For example, in dreams. But if you do it consciously and you know that you couldn't avoid it, you are not, you are not accomplishing with the third commandment. So how are you going to enter into the major mysteries if you are playing with yourself? So you, of course you have to be always holy, Sabbath, because the Holy Spirit is the one that works in the sexual energy. You have, when you sing, you have to take more breath in order to go into the other notes. The same way when you are working and you reach some level, you have to meditate and to annihilate some defects, vices, related with lust that are keeping you in the standby or standing in the world in order to go ahead. But people, people are lazy. They do not meditate. Therefore, they do not pass through. They are just in the same level. And they fail and they again start again like the blowers. So, to keep the Sabbath holy is to work always ahead. Ahead. And if you are in the standard, then you have to meditate in that particular ego that is making you to be standard. Not to pass through. Because we need to pass the initiation. You know, only in the nine minor mysteries, but also in our life, we have to overcome that. To keep always the Sabbath holy. To work with Saturn, with death, always ahead, annihilating. Loving death with all our heart, because we always love the new. Sabbath, Sabbatai, Saturn. The Holy Spirit is the one that works with, uh, with the forces of death. We annihilate the ego, we utilize the forces of our Divine Mother Kundalini, which is the Holy Spirit. Mother Death destroys the ego in order to keep the Sabbath holy. To keep the Sabbath holy is to annihilate the ego and not to return to the past like the wife of Lot, but always ahead, ahead and ahead, dying always. That that we should disintegrate should be always something new, not old. Meaning that if we meditate in one ego and we are done earlier today, tomorrow will be another one. Or maybe a similar aggregate to that particular defect. But not the same one. And of course, in that way, we keep the initiation that we gain in the past there, always, holy. We keep holy the festivities, the Sabbath, the seventh, the seventh day, which is Saturday. That's why I repeat in certain religions, Saturday is the day to confess your sins, because it's the day of death. Yeah, you have to do it as well, but not only on Saturday, because to work with Saturday is to work with death every single day of your life. And you have to confess your sins to your inner particular individual father, to your inner individual particular priest that are within you. And then you have to pray after that, our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, etc., etc., and also the Ave Maria, or the Holy Mary because she is the one that is integrating the ego. In that prayer that says, uh, Holy Mary, Mother of God, you are, how you say, blessed among all women. You say, I'm praying to our Divine Mother. So then, we reach to the fourth commandment. You shall honor your father and your mother. To honor father and mother, on earth, as in heaven, is to honor your monad. Here we reach in praise the fourth commandment. Look how Moses, how wise, he, how wise he is. Because God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, related with the three commandments. But the fourth is also related with, the, with God, related with you shall honor your father and your mother. People believe that this fourth commandment is related to the terrestrial parents that we should honor as well. But of course, when we talk about Kabbalah and the commandments of Moses, we have to understand that 
this fourth commandment is related to our own particular Osiris, Isis, that we have within our own particular Jehovah, which is Yod, the father, and Hebe, the mother, or Eve, the celestial or heavenly couple. Because Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is a monad, a super individuality within each one of us. But from that monad, which is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the divine duad, the divine mother, emerges which is the fourth. The Divine Mother is the wife of the Holy Spirit and within her, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit also dwell. She is wisdom, power, and love together. Wisdom is the Father, love is the Son, and power is the Holy Spirit. These three powers or these three uh, factors are always dwelling within her. And the Divine Mother always carries in her hand a lamp. That lamp is intimate, which is always burning. The intimate is Hedula, the four Sephira. That intimate is a real, unique, individual son, which is not male, neither female, but both. The intimate is androgynous. Andra is man in Greek. Jenica is woman in Greek. So androgynous is a name that means man, woman. So the intimate is androgynous. And is the son or the child, in other words, of the Divine Mother, who is the fourth aspect from the Trinity or a derivative from the three forces. So being she, the derivative from the three forces, is the duad. And the monad is Osiris. And the duad is Isis. So Osiris is the father, the duad, Isis, is the mother. To honor father and mother is to remember the intimate and to understand that the intimate is always the child of God, the child of Jehovah. Horus, of course, is the intimate in, 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 in Egyptian symbology. Horus. The eye of Horus is the clairvoyance. That is, of course, dead in each one of us because we have the eagles strong. Honor father and mother is to understand the duality how are we going to honor God, father and mother, if we think that God is male? Many religions think that God is only one individual out of us and is masculine. To believe that is to be at the half of the atheism. Because God is also female and we should love and worship that female aspect, which is our divine mother, Kundalini. We have to honor our parents, father and mother. We want the civilization of our father, but our father, without our divine mother, cannot achieve our civilization. Because we are, as we identifying with the intimate, we are children of the Holy Spirit, the divine mother. I'm talking about the intimate. That's why we have to remember the intimate. Remember that the Master Samael always tell us, that we have to remember ourselves. But the reality, the real being, is the intimate, the spirit. To remember ourselves is to remember always God, the intimate, which is the child of the Divine Mother. People think that to remember ourselves is to remember the ego. And they are always there observing themselves. To observe ourselves is indispensable. We observe ourselves. We, we observe the mind, the heart, and the sex because he is where the ego is always acting. But to remember God, to remember ourselves, is not to forget the being, the intimate. She's always there. United with the soul, which is gracefully is bottled up into the ego. 
to be always attentive to the intimate and to feel that we are part of him is to remember not just once a week or once a month or once a day, no once a second we always remember our God we love our God and then we observe the ego to observe is not to remember you have to remember and then to observe if you observe without remembering and then you are just doing something mechanically not consciously so in order to observe yourself that's why many Gnostics many neophytes they observe themselves all day long but they don't remember themselves because themselves in this case is God remember that I told you in other lectures the first commandment when the Pharisees were asking Jesus Master, what should we do in order to attain the kingdom of heaven? And then the Master says, well, you know your, the commandments. Well, but all the commandments are always synthesized in one. Yes, says the Master Jesus. And that one is, you shall love your God with all your strength, with all your heart, with all your mind. Hmm? That applies, of course, to be conscious and be an enemy of the ego. So if you are an enemy of, of your own ego, and you are conscious of your being, you are of course centralizing it. Loving your God with all the strength, with all your heart and with all your mind. And then, the second commandment is similar to the first one, said Jesus. To love thy neighbor as thyself. Thyself is the God, is God within you. Because when you are loving God, that is the real self. To love thy neighbor, of course, is to find the God of the neighbor as you are finding your God in you. To love the God of thy neighbor as you are loving thy own God, in other words. But how are you going to respect the being of your neighbor if you don't know your own God? If you are not performing the love to your own God? If you are not accomplished with the fourth commandment, you are not honoring your father and your mother, how you are going to honor the father and the mother of the rest of your neighbors? Here we find the synthesis of monotheism when you are accomplishing with the first commandment. You shall love your God with all your heart, with all your self, with all your strength, with all your mind, etc. And then here we find the foundation of polytheism. And thy neighbor as thyself because thy neighbor are millions and God is within each one of them so there are many gods that you have to worship and respect in your neighbor so that is what the Master Samael tells us the polytheist the monistic polytheist the one that honors and respects the gods he who wishes to become God is that one that accomplished with this commandment to honor father and mother and then the fifth commandment is related with Gebura to utilize your willpower, your strength casually you shall not kill Gebura is the strength it's also called Pehad which means fear fear, Pehad, Gebura of course, you shall not kill, not to kill, beginning with yourself and then with the rest of the things which has life, that have life in this universe. What is the first thing that you have within yourself which is very small and is life? Is the sperm in the man and the ovum in the woman. Is that sexual energy? That is the first life that you have. If you spill, if you fornicate, of course, you are killing life with your action. You can kill also, not only physically, emotionally, mentally, in many ways. You can kill also the longing for sterilization from someone with your actions. If you don't give it a good uh, example with your life, Sometimes it's difficult. 
But you should try to give always a good example of your own life in order not to kill. Remember that life expresses itself in many dimensions, not only in the physical plane. People do not kill physically, but they can kill emotionally or psychologically. In many ways. You are feeling love, for instance, with somebody for many years and suddenly the one comes and stab you and is killing your love. Many times the couples are together but suddenly one of them are behaving in the wrong way. And little by little killing that love that was very big in the beginning. And suddenly Cupid is dead. And that individual doesn't feel anything for his or her partner because that love is completely dead. Who kill it? With our actions, with our uh, behavior, we can kill Cupid. So we should always keep Cupid alive by transmuting, by annihilating selfishness, attachment in the heart, and by comprehending self-importance self-esteem, etc., that is always against love, and that is very strong in each one of us. Not to kill. No karma has to be studied in relation with the fifth commandment. Number five is always karma. But remember that also we have to kill the ego. Remember Krishna talking with Arjuna. You have to kill your family, and Arjuna didn't want to kill his family. His family, of course, is ego. Sixth commandment. What is the sixth commandment? Sixth commandment. You shall not fornicate. You shall not commit fornication. Remember that we said that all the commandments are synthesized in one, which is to love your God with all your mind, strength, and heart. Or soul, in other words. But here we find the sixth commandment, which is related to the number six, because it's when the initiate is always between two paths. Some initiates that are single, they do not pass the sixth initiation, because we are, they are, of course, between the two paths. Mm -hmm. If I keep working on this, well, it will be difficult to find a couple. But meanwhile, in this left path, in this, because number six is the lover between two paths, the path of the right and the path of the left. The left is the soul always finding a whore in the lover. In the right of the soul is a female initiate, a great master or an adept, female adept. But in the left is a whore. And the soul is always looking to the left because usually the soul is always following the path of the left. That whore is that whore whose name is 666. So even though if you are female initiate, you can follow that whore, which is of course the world, humanity, Herodias, the adulterers, to, in order to place ourselves in the right way, we have always to be in love like Mohammed, that he fell in love with God. If the initiate is male, let him be in love with his Divine Mother Kundalini. If the initiate is female, let her be in love with his inner knight, his inner being, father of the words. So the father in the soul is the spiritual soul, the knight, when the initiate is a female. But when the initiate is male, the spiritual soul is Winifer, the queen of the, of the, of the jinn knights. But when the female, when the initiate is female, and then she has to be in love with the spiritual soul, which is the knight, Lancelot. The king, of course, is the king. Long live the king. Arthur, our Thierman, is the intimate. Sixth commandment. Do not, do not fornicate, or in order not to fornicate, you have to transmute the sexual energy in the 49 levels of the being in complete, in complete chastity. Not only physically, 
you can accomplish chastity in the physical plane easily after many years of struggle. But in the 49 levels of the being is something very difficult. Only by entering into the direct path is possible. Many initiates that enter the spiral path, they don't attain chastity in 100% because the egos are strong inside of them. To accomplish with the things commandment implies to take the direct path, not the spiral. And for that you have to die completely in your lust. What is the seventh commandment? You shall not steal. There with Netza, the mind. Remember the mind is always a thief. Stealing things that do not belong to it. I said in other lecture, sometimes when we are full of pride and full of vanity is because we are thieves. Because we feel that we are somebody, but not because of the being, but because the exterior things and when we are proud and vain for the things of the being, and then we are stealing things that belong to the being in order for us to feel proud, to feel pride. When we say, for instance, foolish pride, I am a great initiate because I am having this and these years and performing many things. Meanwhile, the initiate is the being, and the one that is talking is the mind. That's why the mind is always made with foolish pride. It is better before talking or uttering anything to understand that the mind will be proud of something that does not belong to it, but to the spirit. The master always said, my being, he said, is my being, he is the genie of Mars, a great master, is a cosmo creator, but, he said, if you want to talk about my insignificant person that has, who has no value, talking about his own mind, he says, I have, he said, the value of a cigarette ashes, less than that. When he's thrown in the middle of the street, so imagine you a cigarette, half smoke, in the middle of the street, the ashes of that cigarette which is in the middle of the street, the master says, is cool. what, what I am. And, and he said, and I am not talking in a met metaphorical way or symbolically, I am telling you the cruel reality of the fact of the matter, for the being and the being. But we always like to, to, to feel proud, to be proud. It's something that we have to meditate. Not to be a thief, psychologically speaking, it's not to be proud, to be vain, to be considered self-important. There are many other those psychological egos related with pride that we have a lot. And of course, in the lower plane, not to steal things, but psychologically is what we care, what we want to perform, because we are in the past. How we are going to walk on the path if we do not know how to accomplish the Ten Commandments? If we do not know that they are related to the tree of life, which are the parts of the being? Which is the Eighth Commandment? We shall not lie. We shall not uh, bear false witness as well. It's very, very easy to lie. In the heart, hold. It's related with the emotional body, which is always acting through the heart. Inferior emotions subjective emotion. We said we do not lie, but sometimes we lie unconsciously. Usually when we feel enmity against anyone, when somebody make us, make us sick, we say, I cannot see this person. Always when I see this person, he made me feel sick. And I think that is because he or she is this and that and that, and we start criticizing. We are lying. Because that person maybe is not as we think, because we are feeling that. Maybe that person is pointing at us some particular ego or defect that we have within. I told you in the other lecture how a group of 18 people were judging me in Mexico, in, the, in north of Mexico, by telling me things that I didn't do. Right? So they were lying to themselves because they believed 
or what the other person told them. But they were sure in that very moment that everything was the truth and nothing but the truth. Mm -hmm. Later on, they knew that they were lying to themselves and to the others. But sometimes when we are in the heart feeling something against somebody, we have to meditate before saying something. To love your enemy, of course, because your enemy is that one that is hurting you and that is putting you in a certain way that you do not like. To love your enemy is not to lie, in other words, because anyone that is a victim of negative feelings is always a liar. To find somebody that does not lie in this world is difficult. Control your emotions and you will not lie. When we lie, we are far away from the truth, which is the Father. Only the Father is the truth, and this truth is always in the tongue, with the tongue of His Son. But His Son is always unworthy to judge. Remember that uh, event when the Pharisees are bringing a a daughter, woman. And they said to Jesus, we found this woman committing adultery in the very act. And he said, well, if you are free of sin, throw the stone against her first. And nobody is going to do it. And then the master says, neither I judge you or point you. You can go free. Because even when we have the, the, the ego annihilated and the soul is pure in accomplishing with the commandments, in the past you were doing it. It's coming into my mind one of the books of the Master Samael. One of those nights, his mother, eternal divine mother, told him, My son, you, were, you exchanged me in the physical plane for many women. And then he says, my mother, that was the past. I am living from moment to moment. The past is the past. And then she repeated, you exchanged me for many women in the physical plane. My mother, she said, I do wrong by discussing with you, by arguing with you. The past is the past. Now I am not exchanging you for anyone. I only love you. And his divine mother told him, past present or future, you are always the same one. And then he says, well, you're right. Even though that now I am not doing it, how can I erase my actions of the past when I was doing it? So, when you go up again with no ego, you don't have the right to judge anyone. Because you were also a sinner. You were repented, yeah. You are free now, safe. But those people were in the same situation, or are in the same situation that you were in the past. And the ninth commandment related with the ninth initiation is you shall not commit adultery. In order not to commit adultery, you have to love your own God. You have to be faithful, loyal to your own being. That's why it is written that. Jesus loved Mary. Mary, his mother, Mary, his sister, Mary, his wife. The Master Samael says, when the husband is loving his wife, he has to see the Divine Mother represented in his wife, and he has to feel that he is the Holy Spirit. And vice versa, when the woman is loving her husband, she has to feel that she represents the Divine Mother and her husband, the Holy Spirit. And then you are faithful to your own being. It's very difficult to be faithful, not to be adulterer, as we were explaining. In order to accomplish with that commandment, you have to enter, you have to have somebody to love in this physical plane. Yogananda understood that to be faithful to his, to, to his own Divine Mother when his guru, Sri Yukteswar, asked him, 
Well, it is time for you to be married. She answered, I mean, he answered, I only love my divine mother. All of my love is for her. That was well, the answer. Beautiful answer. But he forgot that he needs a woman in order to build the internal body and to perform the great arcane. Because the best way to worship the Divine Mother is in the Saha Maituna with sex magic. And Yogananda ignored it. He didn't know that the best way to worship the Divine Mother was in the sexual act, or is the sexual act. That's why he rejected. Now he has to reincarnate in order to perform with that uh, accomplishment. Because he that entered into the night initiation of my, uh, minor mysteries had to, to, to be married if he wants to keep ahead. But he just uh, reached that level of the night initiation. Of course, to be single was not uh, an obstacle in order to awake and to annihilate certain egos. Now he's going to return and very consciously will work with the major mysteries. Now you see and you understand that the Ten Commandments, even by Moses, are related to those minor initiations that we have to follow in the beginning. To understand that, in order to enter into the major mysteries, we study, of course, each one of the arcana related to the Tree of Life. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah, Lord,